Good morning, everybody, and thanks for coming out on this gloomy day. Uh, our speaker today is Tim Alterman, who is a research technician here at the Work Ralston Arboretum. Uh, Tim was a native of Brookville, which is located in western Pennsylvania, and he graduated from Penn State University with a BS degree in horticulture. Uh, after graduation, Tim took an internship at Callaway Gardens in Georgia, and then worked for a year at Plant Alliance Nursery with Tim Gable uh, before joining the Ralston Arboretum in 2006. He's a member of the North American Rock Garden Society, our parent organization, and is on the board of directors of our local chapter. He's here today to talk about uh, the spring flowers of the Blue Ridge, uh, a trip that he participated in this past spring at the annual meeting. Please welcome Tim Alton. Thank you, Tim. Let's turn it on. Here we go. Up there it goes. Okay. Lights over here. I like it dark. I like so you can see the picture. Uh, the uh, let's see. It was forget the title of the of the um, uh, the annual meeting. It was let's see, exploring the uh, wild flowers of the Blue Ridge or something like that. Uh, and anyways, so the first week in uh, May, the, see, this was on. Friday and Saturday, I believe, that we, we did tours with the, uh, the, the meeting, the ARGS meeting. And first day was, well, it was rather rainy for almost everybody. And the second day, only part of them got rained on, I think. But my, the first day, the tour I went on was at, uh, to Coon Tree Trail and um, Southern Highlands Reserve. And this is, I didn't get very many shots at, uh, at either of them because of a lovely rainy, low light, uh, drippy weather. Uh, so this is just one of the views at, uh, at Coon Tree Trail. You can see all the carrots down in here, and then just the diversity of uh, trees here, and I can't even, well, there's all kinds of stuff in here if you'd really get down and look, but um, I don't get into carrots, fortunately. They just are too tedious. But anyways, we'll get started here. <laughs> uh, right off the bat, as soon as we got out of the, the um, let's see, we were in, Bus, <coughs> bus at this place. Uh, we started seeing wildflowers and we walked into the woods and um, the, one of the first ones we saw here were some of the trill, or the Aerosemas, the Aerosema trifilum, which of course uh, they're common here as well as they are uh, out there and they're common where I'm from in Pennsylvania, but you'd see some variation in, in form in a relatively small area. You can see this one's a rather pale pale version, uh, no purple in there at all, and then this next one, which this was not that far from that one, in, in a floodplain kind of area, um, just off to the, or before we actually got on the path, both of these were, uh, and get that really nice purple in there, and, and the white even on that, so lots of variation, as the whole thing out there was, there's tons of diversity, uh, and what, what's growing out there, it's about the most diverse um, area of the, actually our country, um, in the, at least in the eastern United States. So uh, at this same location, uh, Larry, what's Larry's last name? Melanchamp. Oh, Melanchamp, yes, I can never remember that. Anyways, uh, he was pointing out these trillium, so he said they were uh, trillium uh, vasii regelii hybrids. Can't, I don't know my trillium as well as, uh, I may refer to Tom on some of these, but. <laughs> But the, these were variation in color, uh, had some both pale forms in it, again, you know, that, that real dark burgundy. There were some other shades you'd see. A lot of these were getting eaten up by slugs, unfortunately, it looked like. But these were in the same area as the, um, the jack in the pulpits that we just saw there. Very large flowers, that, that comes from the Vesci. Um, Rugelii is a little bit smaller uh, and blossom wise. The petals are only about half as wide. And then, not necessarily all the flowers, but you can see foliage. This wasn't in flower yet, but, or it may have already been done flowering, I'm not sure, but the Loyola Hasada, uh, the Hulbert leaf, uh, the yellow violet, nice yellow flowers, but that silver splash on the leaf is uh, nice enough, as far as I'm concerned, to, to appreciate. Uh, you'd see these just on the ground here and there. There was tons of stuff. in there. Like I said, I did not get good photos this day, or I would have had plenty more to show you here. Uh, when we actually got up on the path, uh, or the trail itself, um, right along the trail you'd see things actually, there's 
there's, there's Tiarella up here, there'd be big patches of Tiarella, and then you occasionally see some of the um, Gudura pubescens, um, the downy rattlesnake plantain, which you see that around here occasionally too. But, um, it, it, it's just one of my favorites whenever I see this. I saw this also last fall when I took um, our speaker from November last year down to the sand hills, and we saw big patches of this, and I've seen it, I think, probably out on the coastal plain even. So. Uh, just all kinds of places you'll see this in our state. Um, since I didn't have any photos there, I just have a few from other places. Uh, we stopped for lunch at this little restaurant in Lake Hox or Hoxaway, and at a longer parking lot, actually, there were, uh, I saw this, so I had to get a picture. I think this is Fugularia cephalofolia. There's another species that's real similar, and it could be that. I can't remember what it is right off hand, but I'm assuming it's a cecil leaf one. And since the leaves seem to be sessile right here. They're clasping on the stem. Uh, you'll see later on, you'll see perfoliata. Uh, that was in flower and underneath a laurel, mountain laurel. And so in Lake Toxway, our main reason for being there was to go to the Southern Highlands Reserve. And uh, again, it was harrowing to, for me to go up this, this, the mountain. I was so glad I was not driving. The, our, our van driver, it was very foggy. And, this thing, it was twist and turn, right angles, barely a two-lane road, I'd say, and uh, up about a, a couple thousand feet higher than the town itself, and, um, uh, and very steep, very steep. The, the, and Colorado did not scare me. This road is not my favorite. But anyways, once we got up there into the clouds, um, we did get to see a few things. Uh, here, this is uh, Trillium undulatum was um, growing in the woods in one of the areas. This, I think, was a less cultivated area. They have both cultivated and um, rather natural areas in the garden itself that they have in the reserve. Um, I didn't see the uh, painted petroleum anywhere else, so I thought this was a good one to show. And this was in one of their planted areas. So this Calmia buxifolia. You may, Lenophyllum, I think, is another name that you'll sometimes see it uh, under. Um, Buxifolium. This is one, it's named to the Western United States, or the Western North Carolina, or actually throughout the Eastern United States, but you'll see this in the mountains in Western North Carolina, but this also grows in down near Wilmington. So it has a really wide variety of places it can be found growing. Um, the variation in color, the, uh, you see down here the pink buds, that's more typical, but there was this one nice one that was already open, but it was a, almost a um, pure white there. Here's a little bit closer up view of that. So it's a it's a miniature um, mountain laurel is the way I look at it. Uh, and yeah, definitely evergreen. Um, only about 12 to 18 inches tall on that. And so I would assume that should do pretty well here if you have some sandier soils, well drained soils. I don't know if it probably wouldn't like the clay itself, but you could grow this one here in a, probably a peaty, um, sandy soil. It'd be great for a rock garden. And then from that area, we wandered through. They had a beautiful stand of old um, Calmia latifolia or Mountain Laurel. This is what I'm accustomed to um, being from Western Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania State Flower is actually Mountain Laurel. And my hometown, they have uh, the Laurel Festival in early June each year. So um, the, uh, going through the mist and just seeing the contorted uh, trunks of the Mountain Laurel was really nice here. I forget what all was in the understory here. In some parts, there was Galax. And it looks like there might be some over here. But You'd see that in places, and there's all all kinds of other things. Uh, but they had a trail going through there. Um, they had this really cool tractor shed, which you have to see it to know what I'm talking about. But anyways, across from it, there was um, uh, a, some, an amelanchier uh, lavis. I'm assuming, I think it was lavis based on the leaf. I'm not real good with my amelanchiers, but the Allegheny service berry, for me that sounds good because I'm from the Allegheny Highlands, basically, of Western Pennsylvania. So, um, and we have this grown back there, too. Uh, but that was in flower, and just the, that white against the red foliage, a uh, new merge of foliage, is pretty spectacular. And then with the fog. And one of the um, key things out there that they had that they were known for were their Rhododendron and Vesei. There were just a few of them in flower. They were rather late because it was so cool this spring. They were just starting to emerge out of dormancy. Um, this is only native to North Carolina. Uh, and I think I looked on 
um, the USDA plants website last night, and I think there were like five or six counties in the whole um, state, in the western part of the state, that have these. Most of them in the southwestern part of the state, but there's a couple more up towards Boone area uh, that have them. But very rare. Uh, here's a close up of, a, uh, of some blossoms with some water on them. Like I said, they were just beginning to come out when we were there. And then a week later, they would have been a full flower. And then we get to where the second day. The uh, first, no, the second day, I was scheduled originally to go to um, the Alpine Air Casey. And I know Charlie's crew, uh, which was <coughs> along with mine, uh, was supposed to go to uh, Great North Fields, I think. Yeah. Which we were, the Great North Field was lower elevation, I think, and the Alpine Air Casey was a little bit higher elevation above that area. And, um, anyways, the day before it had been just terrible apparently. There was no wildflowers to be seen and it was just drizzly and wet and muddy. And so they, the, our guides decided to take us elsewhere. And I'm very glad they did. Um, Graveyard's Field I think is southwest of um, uh, Asheville. So there was a front coming through and it was supposed to get rainier southwest before northeast. And this was to the north, just to the northeast of uh, Asheville near Weaversville. Um, North Carolina, just off the of Blue Ridge Parkway. And so as soon as we got out of the, the, the bus, we were seeing things. This was right at the trailhead, basically. There was a bank, and you'd see the Galeris Spectabilis, um, or the showy orchid, which uh, I, I think it's Orchis Spectabili, or Spectabilis, something like that is its old name. Uh, they've given it a different genus, but you'd see clumps of these on the, the bank, and uh, just Beautiful. We had seen these the day before too, but my photos from the day before were not great, as I said. Jim, what what is the uh, leaf right in front of the? Uh, that I don't know. <laughs> I still I see that everywhere. I should know what that is, but I don't even know what that is. I see that here even. Yeah, all over the earth. I don't know what it is. I, it might be Asteraceae. Gall of the earth. Pardon? Pardon me. Gall of the earth. Gall of the earth. What's is it? Asteraceae. What is it? Pernanthes. Pernanthes. Know that real yeah. How do you spell uh, that? With a P? P Bernanthes? P -R -E. P -R -E. Yeah. I don't know that word offhand. I'd have to actually yeah. put all kinds of different leaves on it. Uh, yeah. Larry Melichamp says that that is the most questioned leaf in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> when it'll grow up, I've got one in my yard right now that's just going down. It's probably three feet high and it has the little hang me down. Uh, Skin colored tan flowers. Mm -hmm. I'll look it up. Yeah. Thanks, Tom. Yeah, I'll refer to Tom. Tom's the real wildflower person here. Uh, I think this is Pacara aria, uh, golden ragwort, which there was, there's some other Pacaras that it could be. But um, this was just a little bit up the path, or up the, the trail, um, starting to get into a little bit wetter area. It's the orange, or the bright yellow in here, but is the packer itself, and I'll have a little bit closer picture in a second. But just the diversity in among this, uh, there's Smilacina in here, the false uh, Solomon seal, which I think it's actually Mayanthemum now, um, <laughs> Racemosum. Uh, I forget what else. There's, there's some more of that stuff that Tom just said the name of. Uh, <laughs> different fern, uh, Christmas fern here, and oh, there's a little Dentaria down here, or Cardamini, I should say, down here. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff in here. Just every square foot was covered in something, or would be later on, because this is this was rather early and everything was late. <laughs> so, um, what month could, would this have been? This I, would probably be more like normally mid-April, but this was the first of May. Just based on we were probably about two weeks behind, mm -hmm. just like down here. Uh, we had hoped for a little bit further along that for the. Uh, for NARG, for the NARGS meeting, but uh, I think you can never count on the weather to be uh, uh, right with what you want it to be. So. Anyways, here's a close-up of the flowers. Uh, and great um, color in the spring, and then this is the, the roundish leaves down here, these scalloped edge leaves, that's the, the foliage from them. And then back, I think that log right there, I think that maybe, I think that's this log here, so. <clears throat> one similar. But anyways, just on the other side of that, there was uh, hydrophyllum, a macro, uh, macrophyllum, 
um, the large leaf, water leaf. I have not seen this flower before personally, but it's related, closely related to the next plant we'll see here. But it probably has a pale lavender flower, I think, and little yeah. clusters. You can see the buds just start to form here. It was pretty distinct with this um, pinnated fed leaf, and then you'd see the you can see the silver speckles on it, so it looks pretty cool. And that was probably a good 12 to 15 inches tall already. Um, and like I said, probably in a week or two, those would have been out if we had had if we had, had the regular timing on things. Those would have been a flower perfectly for the. Um, the tours. And then this is its cousin, Phacelia dubia. We saw, on this flock, I saw two different species. And you can see both of them here, dubia and uh, the name fit is the other one. But, uh, this is, I think, about the color that the hydrophila flower is, but it's a little bit different in fluorescence. And I think they're in the hydrophilia or something like that. Uh, and again, in here, you can see you can see some bed straws in here. There's chickweed in here. Uh, <laughs> there's cyssis here. There, let's see. That um, that might be a rubus in there. But you know, just the diversity again. And here's a close-up of the, the blossom of that. Um, just the palest blue um, on that, or lavender. And they call it small flower. I don't think the flower is that small. But, um, transitioning entirely. This was just up the path, not that far. That was a rather moist area. We came up on just another little ridge, and you'd start seeing the sedum ternatum, one of the, the native um, sedums that we have, the, the woodland stone crop. And this we saw here and there along the trail. It tends to be in a little bit more open areas, uh, drier conditions underneath oaks and stuff. You can see it. Um, it was in full flower. You know, they're a couple inches tall, and you'd see little clusters of it here and there. And continuing on, I'm, I'm kind of going sequentially with the 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 the, uh, the trail that we were following, so you'll get the idea of it. Uh, we came to the, this original on here, Pochellus, the Robin's uh, plantain, um, the nice daisy flowers uh, here. This flea bane, and it's the originals are often known. And again, um, this this was again a bit more moist area. You're seeing the hydrophila here again. And you can again see the speckling on the leaves, which I like that. Um, who knows what some of these other things are in here. There's maybe some ranunculus in here of some sort. Uh, the diversity was really cool. Just that we saw that. I, I, if you read my article, uh, 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 I said about the plantains wanted to be seen before the, 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 your eye got to see all these trillium. And it was really, uh, where the plants, or the, yeah, the robin plantains were, uh, the air was pretty still there. We came just around the ridge just a tiny bit, and you got this windy area, and that's where all these trillions were, and they were just going back and forth in the wind. Um, you can see the color variation in here as they're aging. <coughs> start out white, this trillion grand and florum, and they start out white, and I guess after they get pollinated, or after a few days, whichever comes first, uh, they start to get a pink tints to them, and they can actually turn a nice deep pink, which I have. I don't know if I have pictures of that in here or not, but um, I think they might have it in the, uh, the article itself, but and this is just a hillside covered in it. It's the dark purple. Oh, that's the next plant. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty. It's pretty mixed with the thing. It is, and it was. Uh, but here's a, a, a down close to the ground view of it, the blowing trilliums. I did get pictures of them in, uh, in the normal fashion, the nice standing still one, but I thought this, this animated vision, uh, the view was kind of cool. So. No, I didn't do it as a video, I should have. Uh, but here's the, Delphin. the, the delphiniums. We started seeing the delphiniums right after this, and we saw those for quite a ways on this this walk, and lots of variation. If you look, there's a, these bi colors, and then they're the, the the typical dark purple, um, and then oh, and oh. Then pink, and then oh, growing among them was the ever present. Well, what's this? Yeah. Yeah, poison ivy poison was ivy. everywhere. I wonder, I'll, I'll, every time you saw a really nice stand, there was poison ivy. Um, I managed to come out of it with, I think, maybe just a couple little specks on my ankle, and that was it. And I was crawling all through it. And didn't get it. <laughs> I thought for sure that next week I was going to be in, uh, in trouble, but no problem. So, but, but we saw these huh. up in big patches. Um, but this was probably one of the nicest pink ones I saw. Uh, and then later on, you'll see I did find a, a pure white one. Uh, 
and then these, of course, weren't flower yet, but the, the Plectrum Himali, uh, the Adam and Eve um, orchid, basically. In the summer, this thing, uh, these leaves disappear. They, these wouldn't be there much longer after this. Probably by mid to late May, those were probably gone. But in the summer, they're followed by, a, it's a kind of a, a brownish or burgundyish colored flower stalk, but uh, orchids, nothing spectacular, um, but interesting. Uh, more so. I just think the, the leaves on these, they look, I don't know, they, it has a really cool look to it. Uh, they're pleated and uh, it looks like they're streaked, but they're not really. Seriously. Yeah, kind of like that. Uh, and then this was the second Phacelia, uh, the Phacelia botanated vita, the fern leaf Phacelia. Just saw these in a few spots actually. The, the uh, Facelia dubia was more common uh, on this walk, anyways. But these get much bigger. The uh, Facelia dubia, it, it was a sprawling mass that might have got six or eight inches <coughs> tall. Uh, this was about two feet. Um, and this was again in a rather moist area. There, if you look down here, there's impatient capensis coming up in here. And you, that was one of the ways I judged on some of the moisture, was seeing where there was impatience growing. Would it tolerate our heat? The Facelias? Um, that, uh, that, that one will. That one will. If you go to um, Amelia Lane's in the spring when she has her spring open house mm -hmm. in April, she typically has that flower in her yard. This one? I think it's this species, or it's one real similar to this. Graham, you got this one. I got tons of them. Yeah, I got It's say. also. <laughs> and we've actually had that last spring, I think, is one of the. Someone brought that in for one of our plant auction plants. So. <laughs> See what you missed out on? Uh, this one, this was in that same area. There was a um, big rock that we passed by, and um, I saw some really nice trilliums here that were standing still. And I got some pictures of those, but they're not in this. I didn't put those in here because we already saw them. But coming up around it, there was this big patch of ferns. And it, this little, oops, I want to go back here. Press the wrong button. Uh, the ferns here, the Cystophorus fragilis, uh, was just a big patch of it. I mean, 15. A square feet of it, and, you know, or a patch 15 by 15 at least uh, of it, and then it would be all over the place in other spots, but just in this one area. Uh, and then among it, you can see was uh, this cardamini, and I, I can't spit this concave. I can't spit this one out. Concadente, uh, concave. Okay, yeah. uh, there we go. Yeah, I can't spit that one out this morning. It used to have another name. It, like, part of the, it used to be a, a, a dentaria, and I could get the name that I had before. But, <laughs> but um, the brittle uh, bladder fern here uh, is growing along with that. The cut leaves did not too poor. So, and again, you can see the impatience coming up in here. But there, just below this, there was patches of trillium, and this is where I found the, the pure white uh, little Dauphinium uh, tricornae. That was only about eight inches tall, but uh, those flowers are a good inch across. So, uh, I look, there are some patches of this in the Piedmont, but uh, it mostly it's in the western part of the state. And this is one you'll see here in Raleigh, too. You see it in the woods down below where I live here, uh, in near Crabtree Valley, uh, Stellaria pubera, uh, the star chickweed. And again, you can see the Cystopterus here. Growing with that. Yeah, it's one of the chickweeds. Yeah. Chickweed. Need a K. Oh, chick. Oh, I didn't even <laughs> notice that. I, I went through and put the common names quickly in last night, so if I couldn't spit the name out, I had an alternative. Yeah, that, that's by accident. It's amazing I didn't. Uh, it will probably have more typos. Yeah, 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 she. Yeah, she. Yeah, she. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for noticing that. <laughs> and then this doesn't look like much here, but I've never had seen this before, but I knew what it was as soon as I saw it, but Philadelphia's in Odorus, uh, and apparently it's scentless. I've never seen a flower either, so I couldn't tell if it's fragrant or not, but it was definitely a Philadelphus or a mock orange. And um, you can see the others were looking off to the side, but I was looking at the, the, the buds that are just starting to, to swell there. Like I said, but if it had been a week later, these would have been flowering. Uh, so. But apparently they would not have been fragrant. But this is one of our uh, the few native Philadelphias we have here in the eastern United States. And that was, you can see there was some rock there. It was growing above the, 
had to be sitting on top of that rock. So Philadelphians are actually quite drought tolerant. We'll go ahead here. Oh, I said about earlier, uh, we had saw the uvularia sessilifolia there in Lake Toxaway, which I saw here as well. In some patches, I actually saw them together with this uvularia perfoliata, the perfoliate, perf perfoliate um, uh, bellwort here. Um, I'd seen these earlier on this same walk here, but they weren't open. There were no flowers on them. And I started to see these and had some blossoms to them. And here's that crazy thing again that uh, Tom, Tom had the name for. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then there's some uh, main anthem up here uh, growing. You'd see uh, polygonatums as well, uh, some different Solomon seals. And we came up into a more rocky area, and it looked like there had been uh, some trees had fallen down several years before, and it was much more open. This is the one place we saw the rhododendron. It was in bud. None of them were open. Again, if another week, <laughs> we would have been uh, perfect timing uh, to see these in blossom. But that was the only place. So we did get to see some ericaceous stuff, despite not being on the alpine ericaceous uh, tour that, we, that was originally planned. And just growing in the middle of the path. I, this was the only one I saw, and I love. I just love the hypoxis. I've seen them other times, but they're just adorable little things. It's like four inches tall. Uh, the flowers are three quarters of an inch across, uh, maybe. Uh, but just in the middle of the path, I got down on my stomach to pick this picture. Uh, uh, a uh, uh, common gold star. But yeah, they should grow here. I've seen it in Georgia in the summer in very similar conditions to here. And then this is where we saw the first of the Cellinis that were open. I'd seen some earlier in, uh, as well, but the Cellini uh, Virginica, uh, I love the fire pinks. They're just so spectacular. I've seen, you know, they grow around here as well, but that, that just pops out, especially against, look at where this is growing. This is, this is not wood, this is stone. And so that's growing in this little fissure here. Somewhere in there, and that's all, all this little stuff is growing. And, uh, now, would they bloom before the leaves come out and shade them out? What, what do you mean? The, the silenes. Oh, they... do you mean before the trees come out? Yeah, before the trees come I out. I think, yeah. yeah. But this yeah. is rather open. This is on a. Is it? This was uh, rather exposed. On, but, but you do see them on forest edges, typically. Oh, I don't know okay. if they'll grow right down. Deep in the woods. So they probably need some sun. They want some sun, yeah. At least in the spring. But, uh, you see them along the parkway. It's yeah. dangerous to look at them. <laughs> <laughs> Love that flower. It looks yeah. like someone came with the pink and shears. It does. Very cool. Yep. <laughs> and then this was just across. There was this great big sheet of rock. I <laughs> saw that rock. And then there was the path, which was rather rocky in itself. But it, it was a walkable spot. And then on the other side, there was this continuation of this sheet of rock. It was about a 45 degree angle. I crawled out on this on my hands and knees. And there were some other people I didn't think should crawl out on there, but they weren't as young as me, um, since I was probably one of the youngest ones there. Um, but anyways, uh, I saw this Selaginella torpidula, uh, which wild Selaginella I've not really seen, to tell you the truth. Saw some other, other club mosses, but, or spike mosses, but not the uh, Selaginellas in. This was just, as you can see, oops. it's just surrounded by stones. So that's just the depression there, the little soil, and it's, it dries up from shore. But anyways, this is a close-up of the foliage. And, uh, as you can see, bare, why it might be called twisted hair. It's just, uh, it's, it goes every which direction. And on the same rock, there was uh, that rock, there was another layer, and then there was water seeping out of it. And you got the uh, Saxifraga uh, virginiensis coming out of there, the early saxifrag. And these are some carex and who knows what else. There was other things. Down further on the rock, there, this is more Physelia, dubia here. And then, um, I guess it's rather rare, is this mountain dwarf dandelion. And it, dwarf dandelion was spelled without a space. I won't say that. I looked that up. Uh, <laughs> or at least on the USDA site, that's how they spell it. So, the Creaky of Montana. So I thought that was a strange spelling. But, Anyways, um, the, the dwarf dandelions weren't open because it was cloudy. But uh, here's a little closer up. And again, look at this, just growing in a little pocket here. There's no soil there. Uh, you can see the dandelion-like leaves here, and then the buds, and then these with 
uh, pop open into the little uh, things. But they were growing this in uh, for purpose of um, planting out, I guess, it, the Southern Highlands Reserve. They had this in their greenhouse. So it was rather rare. <laughs> growing dandelions, you know, in the greenhouse. <laughs> thought that was kind of strange. But this whole this rock outcrop, there was quite a few things on it. I did not go down further, but there was further down on the same rock, there was more saxifraga, much bigger than the ones that were actually in the, the rock crevice. But I'm assuming there was water dripping down there, too. Um, it was 30 or 40 feet down further. But like I said, at a 45 degree angle, I was very cautious. Uh, and then just on the other side, this is on the same rock, there was a Puncha Mufusa. Uh, one of the, the, the two or three species of apuncha that are or cactus that are native to North Carolina. This is one that's native throughout the eastern United States and goes up into southern Canada. Um, but, uh, and actually grows here in Wake County. I've seen it out at um, um, Darn. There's the rock outcropping on Lizard Lake. I can't think what it's called right now. But no, it's there's a little no. But they probably might have it there. I haven't been there. But I actually made a collection and it's up on the. No, it's 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 on Lizard Lick Road, just the east of Raleigh. But um, anyways, it's one of the TLC properties. Yeah, right? exactly. I I have a collection that I made up there. It's on the, the roof garden. But that grows there. It grows here. <laughs> you know, so this one's uh, it was just one one little clump here of it, but uh, it was growing out on that same rock, which 15 feet away was the saxifraga and the fasciliga <laughs> and the uh, the cregia and the uh, the selaginella. So. Uh, and this looks like we have probably carrots coming up in here. This is a goldenrod or an aster, one or the other, uh, you know. And this was just the view looking out from them. You can see a little bit of the, the rock right here. Uh, I didn't put too many views in here, but the, that was one that was nice. The, it was misting periodically, just very fine. Like, you know, the weather we had the last week and a half, that's what we were having when we were out there, but colder. Uh, <laughs> Some sun uh, came in and out during the day here, but, uh, so you never had a real clear moment. But, and depending which side of the ridge you were on, you were getting a breeze or not getting a, a, a that is, it might be a light breeze or a gale. Uh, <laughs> and then just a few feet further, I had seen this the day before as well, but finding good photos the day before weren't great. Um, but the, the Canophilus americana, American cancer root, which is a, a parasitic plant on um, oaks and beaches in particular, though I'm sure it probably goes on some other things. And uh, before we go to the next slide, which is a close up of this, I wanted to point out. And this is an Acer here, this is Acer Pennsylvania, from which I did see some bigger ones later on. And I don't even see this where I'm from in Pennsylvania, but uh, a little further north in the east, you see it. But, uh, this left, that was interesting. I didn't even pick that out until I was looking at my pictures the other week. And, uh, notice that, and then let's see. Let's see. Here's some more of the uh, These are probably you know their grasses are carrots, but who knows? <laughs> and then here's a close-up of uh, the, uh, the inflorescence. And I also heard this called bear corn is another common name for it. Yeah. <laughs> and then along the path, this uh, further down. We went into some more wooded area. It was more like a pump, I mean a maple forest to me. Not as much undergrowth, which maples tend to inhibit uh, to, uh, to some extent with their excessive roots on the surface. The oaks you tend to get some more understory, I think. But anyways, along the path, this little one was just peeking out. Uh, I saw some later on in the day, and you'll see at the end, but uh, the viola pineda, the bird's foot violet, which it grows here, you'll see it in the sand hill, which is probably out in the coastal plain even further, you'll see it. But it's growing on top of the mountain about, I don't know, this is only like 25 or uh, 30, uh, 2,500 to uh, 3,000 feet, I think. It wasn't real high elevation, but you know, it looks like there's some potentilla right here, too. Quinquefolia. Uh, uh, I can't spit that out. But. And then we came into an area where there was some more laurel and some another rock outcrop. And the, I think this is the, the native sedum uh, telephoides. Uh, I can't spit out phoides. Telephoides. Telephoides. The Allegheny stone crop. Uh, might see it as hydro or hypo or hydro. I can't remember. It's hydro telephoides. They sometimes put it in a different genus now, the upright sedums. 
um, like Autumn Joy, which is an Asian cousin of this, which is the naturalized. But there's a couple that are naturalized, which could be that, but I'm guessing where this was at, that this is probably the native uh, one. So. Um, and then just above this, not too far away, was this, this was out on a rock, and this is just all covered in, as you can see, moss. There were, was this clump of um, Cypripedia macaulay, and then about five or six feet away, there was one, another lone one out. Um, that just, they almost were open. Later on, we did see one right along the path that was uh, actually, or there were two blossoms open later on. I don't, I didn't put those in here, but I just thought this was really nice. This was up off the path. I kind of like to wander off the path. <laughs> so uh, if I, I would uh, see what I could find, uh, but that was like walking on uh, very, very, very thick carpet. Uh, it was very cushioned, uh, but they were just growing on this. Not much else other than the moss and the orchids. Uh, it was very open. There were some lichens and stuff. But we tra uh, transitioned from this rather open area, and then this is back into the woods, which there was a lot less. Um, um, understory of this area here, but the, there was a clump of lily and Moshoei. I've actually never seen them in the wild, uh, so this was the first for me. But they weren't real big. But in a few months, these might have been flower. Um, but and then not. I don't think it was much more than 25, 30 feet away. There was William Superbum, which I grew up with. This this grew right behind my house back in Pennsylvania, and in the uh, fields, and uh, we get big clumps of them. But, uh, as you can see, rather sparsely uh, vegetated here, though it looks like there's some geraniums growing in here as well. Uh, and then let's see, this might be it's either bracket fern or uh, a rattlesnake type fern, a, a botrychium uh, in there. And probably some asters or, or ure urebia, maybe, <laughs> as Tom was asking me about earlier. Uh, and we had lunch then for, and it, we, when we actually got to Rattlesnake Lodge, which was an old kind of, I guess, uh, maybe like a spa, I guess you'd describe it as for, uh, during the first part of the uh, 1900s, probably into the, I think by the 20s, it been 30s, it was basically uh, abandoned, but there was all kinds of um, stone walls and stuff, and we all sat and ate there. There was apparently a tennis court at one point. There was all kinds of stuff. There were water features, which are just all ruins now. All that's left is the rock walls. But after, or while we were eating lunch, or after we were eating lunch, I went and was wandering around while the others rested. And I found these up in the woods. Uh, the anemone clinquifolia, uh, wood anemone. And uh, as you can see, there's even, <coughs> those are some trillium seedlings there too with these. And it might be poison ivy right there. <laughs> Ever present poison ivy. Uh, but there was all kinds of stuff that uh, some of the others didn't go and find. I did. So and here's just a close up of the, the anemone. And up in the woods as well. I had seen these earlier in the day, but the Philectrum dioicum, this is one I actually, the air was booed, or stagnant enough that I could get a picture of the flowers. It was relatively clear. Uh, I think this is a boy because they're dioecious, dioecum. Uh, these look like stamens, not pistils, but I could be totally wrong. Uh, the foliage looks like any other philectrum, just a really ferny, kind of maiden hair looking like foliage. Uh, that one's probably about 12 or 15 inches, though you can see them a little bit bigger than that, but you have two feet. Ooh. And this, I don't know if this is just a common blue violet, but I had these back home in Pennsylvania. There was a clump just across the, in the woods across the road from where I lived. Uh, I had never seen them anywhere else uh, until the, then I saw them here. Uh, but uh, it's probably just a common blue violet, just a variation on it. But there were a couple different clumps of them, and that's not because of insect damage either. Thrips, it kind of looks like thrip damage, but it's not. Uh, <laughs> That I just that was kind of rem uh, a thing for reminiscing for me a little bit back to my childhood. I would go and dig them up and bring them to the yard. I could never get this one to go though. And all the other violets would be weeds, but this one would not. And then this is up above the, the thing. This is ramps. Uh, there was a big patch of ramps, and who knows what else is in here? Looks like <coughs> some lichen right there, and poison ivy that red, of course. <laughs> That, uh, all kinds of stuff. If, if you got down on your knees, you could find it. Uh, 
firm. And those wouldn't be flowering probably until, I'm gonna guess into June, late June probably up there. That's when they would flower for me back home in Pennsylvania. But, um, yeah, I don't like to eat them, no. Some people do like to eat them, but not me. I'm not into onions that much. Uh, but anyways, just not that far was similar looking, but the Clintonia, or I'm assuming Borealis, um, could be Umbelatum, or Umbelata, I think is the other species. But I think based on the leaf shapes, it was Borealis, but the foliage is just gorgeous on these. Uh, followed by little uh, clusters of alley looking flowers for all intents and purposes. Humbles much like them later on in the spring. And you can see the humble right here. It's a little already formed in there. Wouldn't have been too much longer. I'd say probably middle to late day, those would have been in flower. And let's see, who is it? Here's that ever present thing that Tom mentioned. <laughs> Picking it out everywhere now. And a poison ivy. <laughs> yeah. And again, this is where I saw the, uh, the Unularia and Cecilifolia again here. So uh, it looks like maybe geranium here, maculatum, and the ever present thing that I can't spit the name out for. Potentilla, and, and some Smilacina, or that is may have come up. I won't get used to that for a while. But there's more violets there. But, but this was rather, this was totally different than the first area of forest we were in, but it was not the sparse like the, oh, where the lilies were at. Uh, and then we started, we started back down the trail after everyone got, my group, the first part of our group, got down to our lunches. There was probably 15 or, uh, or so of us. Um, and the, the section I was with, Charlie was back further on the, 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 the trail with the I rest of the group. I don't know, <laughs> I went faster, but, you know, but I don't know if all these are rectums. Tom thinks maybe this is something else, right? What did you say that one might be? Might be so pretty. Yeah, I don't know my trilliums well enough. But there's just this swarm of different colors. And this one is that dark color. It was just spectacular. Um, and I like these yellows and bicolors. It, just all different forms. Throughout this whole, whole area, it was a, um, there was a, the stream was coming down the hillside from here. And they just got a lot of them. Um, I'll show you some a picture of the stream later here. But just spectacular color. And look at this. I mean, back in here, some of the dark ones. Here's some of the, the yellow one. Here's the dark one, a pink one, a, a creamy white one. Uh, you know, it's all through here. And looks like actually there's some viola, uh, one of the yellow violets here. I don't remember. That's not the one I showed you earlier, but I can't remember which one that is. <laughs> Um, I think this is some hydrangea actually back in here. I, re I remember looking at the picture a little closer. And there's rhododendron uh, maximum back in here as well. Um, and then even beside that, beside the rectums or whatever they are, <coughs> you've got some of the grandiflorum. So. And I just think it's funny with the erectum, the, the name, the common name for the erectum is red trillium. <laughs> Not necessarily. No, no, here's some, definitely some hydrangea right here. Uh, Arborescence. Oh, and here's Arabia for you, Tom. Mm -hmm. Arabia and Vericata. The white wood aster. That'd be flowering right now. Uh, and then this is the wet seed. It just came down. This whole hillside was just dripping with water. Um, and the diphilia was growing in among it. And there's actually Dodecatheon up in here, more trilliums. Ferns, the lictrum, um, the rhododendron, of course, you can see that, the hydrangea. There's so much stuff growing all through this whole area. <coughs> there's saxifragus in here, too, somewhere. I think this might be one of the dodecatheon, yeah. uh, which I have pictures of it here in a second. But there's so much diversity on this hillside. But the main thing that you see are the diphilia, which they look kind of like a may apple, which is one of their cousins. They're in the barberry family. And this is growing, I don't see these very often here, but this was Betula lenta, I think, or, or lutea, either Be lutea, Betula lutea, let me guess. Uh, um, or Allianensis, what they changed the name to. Oh, regardless. I see this back home uh, occasionally in some of the forests, but you don't see these down here. <laughs> Big birches, you know. Anyways, here's a close-up of the flowers, actually, on the diphilia. And doesn't that look like a little mayapple? 
But that's only like, oh, half an inch across instead of an inch and a half or two across to the, the mayapple flowers. Oops, let's go back here. It looks just like a miniature mayapple flower. And these do not. These are upright. It's not waxy. It's very waxy. Really? Yeah, it's waxy. It's waxy. You can't see it in the picture because of the way the projector is. But it's very waxy. The, the floral morphology is identical. It, it's barberry relative. It has a barberry anatomy. So, uh, and then here's some of the dodecatheon. And again, you can see it's very wet here. There was you had stepping stones, basically, where all these moss-covered stone, uh, stones, and there'd be branches. You could walk over them. And there were trilliums growing in this mess. There were, um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was, there was in the tons mall. of stuff. In the mall. Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff. You can see the, the patient pits and stuff in here. Um, I think it's really good. They're a lot bigger than we saw earlier. Time yeah, and probably a little bit warmer, I'm guessing, due to the water, yeah. uh, actually from the stream. But there's a close-up of the flower. And I thought, let's see, what was, there was something, I found a common name for this something last night. And it was Ohio, something Ohio, and I just didn't think that was appropriate using that one. So I went back to just a shooting star. Um, <laughs> and then here's another little thalictrum. And this was this is growing on a little rock. And it's just covered by, um, um, they're surrounded by water, I should say. The stone covered in the moss. It just percolates up. But that's maybe, six or eight inches tall, and this is just tiny. I saw these, actually I saw a few the day before, but I didn't get, like I said, didn't get any good photos of them. Uh, this was uh, quite cute. I saw a few more here. But this can get much larger um, than, you know, a foot and a half. <laughs> and then nearby, this is one of the other saxifraga, um, uh, Micranthida folia, the lettuce leaf um, saxifraga. That, this kind of blended in with the the um, dodecatheons because the foliage was kind of had that same look to it, rather upright and, uh, and lettuce-like. Uh, you can also see the arevia in here, the wood aster and the diphilia up here, uh, and there's a trillium. But again, this is the water is actually going between these rocks. This is where you see the moss there. There's rocks. <coughs> In, in the same area, in the same seat, uh, Prosarges um, luminosa, the yellow fairy bells, is, I think used to be either a disporum or an uvulary. I can't remember which at this moment. Disporum. Yeah. But they've, they've given its own genus now. I've seen the, I've seen the similar species in uh, the western United States, and I've seen our native one, and I think there's a, at least one or two species from Asia, the Prosarges. But these get about 15 to 18 inches tall. And it's a branched stem, and then you have it on the, the tips of the stems, you have um, the little yellow flowers. And then we got out of the, the, the moisture. We're, we're heading back down um, to where we had to meet up with our bus. Um, and if we were going through a lot of floral thickets, and there'd be galax growing underneath it. And, um, but, and this is actually real close to where we saw the blooming moccasin flower, the uh, Sympropedia macaulay. That this was a um, Ubatra, or Ubatra, or I can't say that, Ubatri. Ubatri is recurva, uh, recurva uh, the a red twig dog hobble. Uh, it was actually in flower. I'd never seen this before. I had to look this one up to figure out what it was. But, uh, just a few flower stalks on it. Those were actually pretty good sized. Um, See the individual flowers, maybe uh, almost a half an inch long. And that's deciduous? That's deciduous up there. Mm -hmm. It might be semi-evergreen in warmer areas, but yeah. Uh, are those related to the or are you Yeah, it's, yeah it, it's closely related. I don't know what the current classification, they adjusted names some. But yeah, closely related. It's in the air casey. Uh, so there's another Ericaceae. Oh. So we, did, we didn't see alpine, true alpine Ericaceae, but we saw lots of Ericaceae on this thing. Verdedendrons, mountain laurels, azaleas, uh, saw Vax, I'll see Vaccinium and Galusacchia, uh, and Urbatris. Uh, um, we did see dog, or that is um, Lopithoe as well. Excuse me. Lots of other Ericaceae. And then getting down close to where the bus was, uh, there was another, the tra trail kind of turned back up around. There was another alternative way to go. 
and I started back up in a little ways and hopped over the stream. There's a uh, hop, skip, and a jump. There were some rocks I had to jump onto to get across this stream. But anyway, just on the other side, there was a beautiful patch of um, Iris cristata. It was probably 30 or 40 feet long, it was a dense patch. Uh, and then I walked up in the woods and it was just all over, but much more um, dispersed. But, um, beautiful. And actually, the sun was starting to come out a little at this time, too. So things were oops, a little bit brighter, held out a little too long. There's just a close up uh, of the blossoms themselves. Did you come across any alba? No, I did not see any white ones. Yeah. I was looking for some variation, but no. Uh, the white ones are good too. And then this was right down almost to where the bus was itself. And this is right along the stream. This, this, oops, ah, pressing the wrong button here. I want the laser. This rock kind of goes out, and the stream was right over here, um, just kind of cascading over this rock. But uh, the Carmini dipella, which we have this here in Raleigh, and I see this, uh, it was in flower as well here. Broadleaf two for it. Uh, and then there's ranunculus in here. It's a uh, Christmas fern and patience again. Uh, this is probably maybe a geranium, it looks like right here. Uh, and the violets, just again, just everything was dripping with different. Which one? Yeah, and this down here now. I didn't see any hepatica. That's ranunculus of some sort. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't see any hepatica. They probably would have been done flowering at that point. We went to a, another uh, location just rather quickly. We had a little bit of spare time, and the weather was so good. This was right along the Blue Ridge. And we climbed up. We had to climb up the, uh, 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 the bank to get to this. And it was, uh, it was kind of, uh, it wasn't my favorite place, but I did do it. Uh, but um, to see the, uh, this Amelanchier sanguinea, which I guess is quite uncommon, at least in that area. Uh, the, the round leaf the service berry. So uh, we did get to see this. These were only like five, six feet tall. There were some that were maybe a little bit bigger than that. And, uh, and you can see the blue ridge here, just looking out <laughs> uh, towards it. And there's just a close up of the flowers. Uh, not easy to see there with the background being so foggy, but if it had a blue sky behind it, it might have been a little better. <laughs> we didn't have that. So, anyways, just a couple more here. Uh, again, Viola Pedata was up in this area, right above, uh, this was above a big rock outcropping. Um, and then with the Annapolis there, and I don't try to figure out babies, or the, the pearly everlastings. That, uh, they're uh, a challenge for me, so, or uh, mosquitoes sometimes called. Uh, but you can see why. Uh, but some aster ACE stuff here, I'm assuming this looks like maybe a goldenrod or an aster or whichever. And, Probably a carex here, this grassy stuff. But uh, this is my last plant here. But going back to my Ericaceae, this is Galasacchia vacata, is what I was told. And I thought this was just pretty with the the, the new growth and then the the, the red tipped florets. That's beautiful. Yeah, it was just a mass. Later on in the spring, there would be or early summer, or actually probably midsummer, there would be covered in blackberries. Mm. And I forgot to put the common name on that. Would that grow here? Probably some of the blueberry as well. Your black huckleberry. That ends my my four. Yes. Any questions? Uh, this is our NARGS meeting for this year. Next year, it's sometimes they haven't announced the specific date yet, but it's in Santa Fe in September. That's all they're saying yet. But I have the website. Uh, Chris can get us to it, maybe. There we go. If you keep an eye on this website, there should be under the, the, the latest news at some point they'll say when they're, when the uh, actual dates are in the specifics. So I've been trying to keep an eye out on that and see if they actually will say that they haven't yet. So, yeah, I think so in September. Santa Fe would be real cool. So. We'll pray for a lot of snow cover so that the bloom in the spring. <laughs> it's, in, it's in September. Okay. Ah. Well, That's really we, won't be, we want a moist summer. Avoid the heat. I want to thank you because you know, I was on those same walks and I didn't see a lot that you did. Yeah. You were the guy crawling <laughs> among the poison ivy and I wasn't. So I, mean, I now saw a lot of things I didn't. <laughs> I have a question. I didn't see any native gingers 
in any of these pictures. I didn't take too many. Um, we saw some the day before. Tom will say that they're hexastylus, and I'll say that they're a serums. But uh, we did see some hexastylus or a serum, whatever. Or columbines. Um, see any columbines? I don't think I saw any columbine either. Really? And maybe I think be all over the place a little bit there. later on, I'm guessing. Yeah, I saw a serum on the tree. Yeah, I saw a serum on the tree. Yeah, I saw a serum on the tree. But again, my photos were not good from the tree at all. I actually do have a picture of some with a serum from the tree. I didn't see any of the foliage of them, but um, I wouldn't be surprised that you find tipularia there. I find tipularia here in Raleigh, um, which instead of the uh, trade fly work, um, which it, it's kind of similar to the aplectrum, uh, but it's much a little bit smaller, more burgundy leaves, uh, sometimes have spots. Uh, I like those just for the foliage during the winter, and then the flowers come up in the, the middle of summer uh, out of nowhere, much like the Adam and Eve work. The leaves are just starting up now. Ventricular area and then spectrum. Yeah. I have one comment or, or suggestion. I don't know if any of y'all have ever been. Uh, one of my schools is um, Sanford Creek Elementary School up in Rollsville. There's a park right behind it called Rollsville, I think, Town Park. Well, if you enter it and park on the the road, I think it's Granite Falls Drive that runs behind the school. There's a parking lot. And the path, it's, it's all, a lot of it's paved paths now, but there's some great, beautiful rock outcroppings. Probably the same vein of rock that you saw at Lizard Lit. But yeah. it's, there's some really neat rock outcroppings and a lot of native wildflowers, including the Puntia yeah. and, and lots of all that stuff growing in the crevices and stuff. It's a neat place to go. I just stumbled across. Yeah, the northeastern, North, or uh, Wake County, there's a lot of Yeah, yeah really neat place. There's just some cool stuff there. Yeah. Do you have any ideas about <coughs> getting rid of Opuntia? <laughs> it's not that hard to get rid of. Put on a pair of gloves. The little one ones, yeah. <laughs> so, is it the native or is it one of the bigger ones? Oh, it must be native. My, my brother has a blueberry farm in Indiana. <coughs> okay, yeah, they, have, they have some other species. They might have prairie, uh, the prairie uh, prickly pear, and that gets that's a little meaner than our native one. They dug it up and put the roots up like that. Oh, that won't kill it. No, <laughs> no. He never just down from the other direction. Oh yeah, yeah. just roots in. Yeah. If he's going to have to get rid of it, he has to actually that's remove it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It. yeah you can't just pull it out because that's how they naturally propagate. Any they break up. off. It's just a stem. It's not a leaf. Yeah. It's just a stem, and if it hits the ground, it, 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 it roots. It roots very yeah. easily. Yeah. So just and don't mow it. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you know, it's the heat. <laughs> Uh, I think they do burn in places like in Texas. They'll burn off the spines in orchards, yeah. and they'll use them for cattle feed. Oh wow! Uh, interesting. Use no And you can actually eat it too. Yeah. yeah. Use it as the Canadian. They use it for other things in uh, huh. some of the Mexican cuisine. Any other questions or comments? Uh, I, I've got a question along the same line she had. I've got some property up in Cleveland County that's got uh, black locusts that's grown up in uh -huh. I can't get anybody to bush hog it uh -huh. because it punctures the tires. Uh -huh. and, uh, <laughs> so I don't know how to get rid of black locusts. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to get rid of some of the garden. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right, Tim. Thanks again. Great. Right.